Chapter 4 Sample Collection Topic Specimens Other Than Blood Part 1 Patient Collected Specimens At the end of this chapter, learners should be able to understand the equipment and concepts used in pre-analytical processes for specimens other than blood, the requirements for patient collected, physician collected and lab collected samples and the best practices to avoid errors. Samples other than blood can be patient collected samples, physician collected samples and lab collected samples. Samples collected by patient themselves can be urine, stool, sputum and semen. Patients can be instructed to give urine as spot samples or a 24-hour sample. Spot sample or spot urine is the sampling of a single untimed urine specimen voided spontaneously by the patient. Spot samples for urine can be used for routine urine examination, urine culture and sensitivity and other spot samples. For all urine analysis, early morning, first voided, clean catch, midstream specimen is the best. In case of dysuria, spot sample may be accepted for routine as well as culture examination. Requirements for urine collection are soap, water, sterile plastic container which should be well labeled with correct details with patient's name, age and ID number. Clean catch midstream urine collection is the least invasive procedure and must be performed carefully for optimal results, especially in females because of chances of contamination. Good patient education is essential. Guidelines for proper specimen collection should be prepared on a printed card, preferably in a local language, with the procedure clearly described and preferably illustrated to ensure patient compliance. The patient should be instructed to clean the periurethral area well with a mild detergent to avoid contamination. Of importance, the patient should also be instructed to rinse well because the detergent may be bacteriostatic. Once cleansing is completed, the patient should retract the labial folds or glands penis and finally begin to void and then collect the midstream urine sample after discarding the initial flow. Because urine is an excellent supportive medium for growth of most bacteria, urine must be immediately refrigerated or preserved. Bacterial counts in refrigerated urine at 4 degrees Celsius remain constant for as long as 24 hours. Urine transport tubes containing boric acid, glycerol and sodium formate have been shown to preserve bacteria without refrigeration for 24 hours when greater than 10 to the power 5 CFU per ml were present in the initial urine specimen. The system may inhibit the growth of certain organisms and must be used only if the quantity of urine is minimum 3 ml. Both boric acid products preserve bacterial viability in urine for 24 hours in the absence of antibiotics. 24-hour urine collection All collection containers have to be labeled with the identifiers like patient's name, age, lab reference number. Specific labels are to be attached to the container with instructions about collection. If specific preservatives are required for different analytes of biochemistry, instruct the patient about the preservative and restrict him from discarding the same. Instruct him to discard the first urine passed in the morning, note down the exact time. From this time onwards, collect all subsequent urine samples in the container. Continue till exact time next day. Enter the time details on the container. 
the patient should return the 24 hour urine sample container within 1 hour to the lab for creatinine clearance test also take one blood sample for serum creatinine during the 24 hours for microalbumin detection spot samples are adequate for urine pregnancy test early morning clean catch midstream specimen is preferable requirement for stool collection a pre-labeled sterile wide mouth container preferably with a scoop because organisms like giardia may be shed intermittently collection of specimens at different times over several days enhances the recovery therefore for stool tests especially for giardia patients may be instructed to collect three consecutive stool samples on three days one to two gram of sample is sufficient for processing transport to the lab within 30 minutes of collection tightly cap the container the don'ts to be followed in stool collection are do not mix urine with the specimen do not add any preservatives do not collect from bedpan or closet For stool or cull blood determination, the patient should be advised not to collect sample if he or she has active bleeding from hemorrhoids or an inner fissure or when there is blood in urine. Women should be advised not to collect sample during menses or during the first three days after the end of the period. The patient should be advised to stop taking medication like aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as brufen and naproxen seven days prior to the test. The patient should be advised to make dietary changes three days prior to the test like avoid eating vitamin C more than 250 mg per day, avoid eating red meat, avoid eating raw fruits and vegetables, especially melons, radishes and turnips. These foods and supplements can cause false positive tests. Toilet bowl cleaners may affect the results of the test, so the sample should be collected with the least contact with the toilet bowl. Procedure for stool culture. Collect specimen directly into a clean, dry, sterile, leak-proof, wide-mouth container. Transport to the microbiology lab within one hour of collection or transfer in medium like carry blair or any other appropriate transport medium. Swabs for routine pathogens like parasites, toxins or viral antigens are not recommended except in infants. A quick question here. What is the preferred container for stool culture? A narrow-necked plastic container? A wide-necked clean container? Any container at patient's home? Or a sterile wide-necked container? The answer is a sterile wide-necked container. Sputum should be collected in a sterile plastic screw capped container which should be well labeled and should be leak proof. Sputum can be expectorated or induced. For collection of expectorated sputum, explain to the patient to rinse his or her mouth with plain water before bringing up the sputum. It is essential that sputum which contains the purulent material or destroyed tissue is collected and not saliva. The patient is instructed to inhale deeply 2-3 to three times which will initiate a cough reflex in most patients. The sputum is retained in the mouth and spit into the pre-labeled container without spilling. Some patients may not be able to expectorate with deep breathing, in which case you should demonstrate to them how they should place their palms on the waist, squat or sit and continue deep breathing again. Sitting and placing hands on the waist fixes the shoulder and pelvic muscles and brings the intercostal muscles of the ribcage and diaphragm into action. Tapping or thumping of the back may encourage expectoration. Steam inhalation may also help in expectoration. 
recover sample and place in a leak proof sterile container whenever possible sputum should be collected in an open place or in a well ventilated room meant for this purpose for diagnosis of tuberculosis rntcp recommends spot morning sample patients unable to produce sputum may be assisted by the medical staff before sputum collection patient should brush the buccal mucosa tongue and gums with a wet toothbrush alternatively aerosol induced sputum may be collected by allowing the patient to breathe aerosolized drops of sodium chloride using an ultrasonic nebulizer or until a cough reflex is generated gastric aspirin sample is used exclusively for isolation of acid fast bacilli and may be used in children this has to be done by trained staff for semen collection the equipment required is a sterile dry white mouth plastic container ensure a quiet separate room for collection a period of abstinence between 3 and 5 days is mandatory longer periods usually result in higher semen volumes but lower motility if the period of abstinence is very long a second sample is to be collected after 2 hours to assess motility bladder should always be evacuated prior to ejaculation a post ejaculation urine sample must also be collected to see if retrograde ejaculation is suspected the most satisfactory sample is when the collection is done within the lab to enable assessment of liquefaction time if the sample is collected at home then it should be delivered to the lab within an hour samples should not be collected in condoms as the powder or the lubricant applied in the condoms can be spermicidal home sterilized containers should not be used as detergents can be spermicidal water is also spermicidal hence the container must be dry the lid of the container should not have rubber lining as contact with rubber can result in sperm death the sample should be examined as early as possible if delay is likely store at 20 to 30 degree celsius maintain confidentiality thus to summarize proper instructions to the patient prior to sample collection improves the quality of specimen and hence the patient outcome